All right, Bob. Flat feet, fallen arches, and overpronated feet. They're right. all the same thing. Our feet are flat. They can cause foot pain. They can cause problems with your walking. We're going to show you some uh, simple and yet surprising ways that you can correct this and increase that arch, become normal again. And might I say, at the end of this, this video, we're yep. going to have a fabulous giveaway. Say no more, Bob, and all it's right. all related. Let's uh, move on. Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Okay, Bob, first let's talk a little bit about what is a flat foot, pronated foot. Right. And if we look here, we got, now my foot, I do not have a flat foot, so I'm going to show you, and it'll, you'll understand. Here's the red arch with the white mark right there, Bob. There's plenty of room there for my finger. Yep. So, you know, I've got a normal arch. Now, if my arch falls or flattens, you right there. my finger. Yep. It's right there. Yep. And then we have problems. Now, some people's arches are so severe that this is there's a navicular bone here. And if they're so flattened out that that bone is down on the floor. Yeah. You definitely are not going to, you're going to need arch supports. And plus, if you're of the elder age. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And so then you will, this is not a true arch support, but, you know, you put that in there, it will support here. Uh, and that may need, may be what you need. However, a lot of people, we want to it, avoid right. this. Right. Because we want to strengthen the foot. Right. This does nothing more than actually supports the foot and weakens the intrinsic, those small right. foot muscles, as well as the posterior tibialis. They're good and they're bad. Yes. All right. So we're going to get on to... The first thing to strengthen your foot. Okay, Bob, now you and I know this, but not everyone is aware of what is going on with the whole, the foot, the knee, yep. and the They're hips. It's all connected. It's all connected. So we've got, uh, we're going to show the tibia, and the green line is the edge of my tibia, the anterior right. aspect. There's the edge. Yep. Now, if I flatten my feet, look what happens right there. Yep. The tibia internally rotates. It turns in, mm -hmm. which is bad. Right. Right. It's actually bad on the knee, too. Right. As well as, look what happens here with my hip. If I show my hip here and I internally rotate, there is motion going this direction in the hip joint. And we want to, we could have weak hip muscles here, but we yeah. also want to address this, and we're going to do that, too. That'll uh, be later. Yep, yeah, a little bit later. So, again... This motion, we get knock knee a little bit, flattens that foot, works the so hips. So this is the right direction we're going to move the yep. tibia. So this is the exercise, and this is an option. You can do this with your uh, shoes on. It probably works a little better, but you can see what's going on without. Right. And all I'm going to do is stand. I may need something to hold the balance and lift those arches. Lift those arches. And, and kind of turn the leg out. Yes. Right, a yep. little bit. I'm thinking about bringing the knees out. You can see the right. tibia rotating. Can you turn a little bit, Brad, towards me? Sure. Now you can see the arch here, oh, what, right. what's so happening. We're, yep, that's what's it's going flattening, on. It's, it's increasing. It flattens, it increases. And it really gives you awareness of what's going on with your feet. Right. Some people are completely uh, unaware of it for uh, just because they're not therapists and don't think about it all the time. Okay, and then we're going to... Go right into the next exercise, which is very much related to the one we did. But instead of both feet working together, we're going to just focus on one foot at a time. It's a little more intense. And, and provide a little resistance. Yeah. And right. you might be wondering, why am I doing something with my arm and shoulder? It offers resistance and makes my posterior tib and those small muscles work. So I'm going to stand here. I, I may need to hold on to something for balance. And I'm going to pull out like this. On one leg, so my left foot is down, my left arm is pulling away from the wall, and you can anchor that. We got the wall anchor, you can hook it up to a doorknob, a piece of furniture, whatever you need, because it doesn't need much resistance at all. S somebody you trust can hold it. <laughs> yes. And now what's going on is my foot, that forces my foot to actually supinate or Again, my Brad, arch Again, Brad, maybe goes if up. you go ahead and turn out. Yep, let's do I that. Mean, tw towards me yep. a little bit. Okay, let's see what's going on. Again, as there. So anytime I pull on that band with my left right. arm, this motion is forced, so I hold my balance. And it's really a nice way to do it without thinking about it. The right Ooh, thing happens. Right. And then let's go right to the next one. Hey, 
All right, and exercise number three for those ankle and foot muscles, you go on a stair like this, and it works well if you have handrails. Yes, exactly. To hold on I to. really prefer that. Yep. So, and shoes work best by far. Heels should be off the edge like I have here. We're going to go down, not real far. It's not important how far down you go, but what is important when you go up, watch what happens. I'm going to lift my toes up and, and separate. You turn the end. Yep. Right. And that works those muscles that help lift the arch. Oh, yes. And, you know, 10 you'll, to 15 definitely, of these. You'll really feel it. Right, Ben? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, if you get advanced, I mean, for you know, maybe uh, the athletic people, they might want to do go, one foot. Yeah, I'm all my left foot's doing most of the work. This one's here just to touch and to balance. Right. And you know that would be the end process when things are really going well and you've completed the other mm -hmm. ones. So those are three options from the easiest to the hardest. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is footwear. Right. Because footwear is you change footwear and. You're doing your foot exercises without even thinking about yes, it. Yes, exactly. You can be doing foot exercises all day long. And the first thing, the easiest thing to do is simply walk barefoot. Right. Obviously not all day long. Obviously not outside in the gravel, but inside your house. Or stocking footed. Yeah, or yeah. stocking footed. Right. On the carpet. Maybe only for... You know, half an hour if you haven't walked barefoot. Yeah, see how it tolerates. Yeah. You know. You'll find those foot muscles get tired. Right. Um, and the next step up from there, Bob, you want to show them your shoes? Yeah, we got zero drop shoes. So the sole is the same width all the way along. Yeah. We don't have any heel at all. Right. So they're somewhat of a flat shoe. Exactly. Basically. And also wide shoe. Yeah, so, so you, you got, got plenty of room. A lot of room in the toe box. So I, I, I use these for walking. I'm not yet to the point where I can run them with mm -hmm. them. Yet. So, but I definitely can use them walking. And you'll want to take your time because I know I have a pair, and I was walking with them for like a week, and I decided I should start running. It was too early. What a shock. <laughs> yeah. Brad, tried I'm, something I'm, too fast. I pushed the envelope as, I, as my personality always does. I'm and working on that. your though. calf muscle got... Strain. Yeah, yeah, it's strained. better. It wasn't tore. It's better. I mean, okay. I can now run. It only took me a couple gotcha. weeks. <laughs> okay, so they're called minimalist shoes with zero drop. Right. Uh, that's a nice, easy way to do it so you can uh, strengthen the foot. And we've got number three, and we're going to get into the hip. Okay, and this is what a key thing that a lot of people forget is the hip external rotation, external rotators, I'm sorry. And you're gonna they're the muscles that make you pull out like that to get the alignment proper throughout uh, from the hip to the foot. Bob's going to show a, a good yeah, beginner way. Also for the knee, we're going to start with lining up your legs. You line up your hips, line up your knees, line up your ankles. Yep. You have a slight bend to the knee, and you're just going to work on opening the, cl the clamshell. Sure. Wait, can we get that camera on here? So as we do this, Bob, you will feel these muscles right back here in your backside of your hip working they'll start to burn a little bit but if you don't we can add some resistance there you go all right we have a pretty band in place <laughs> so if we want some resistance put the band in place and yeah this is a lot more work brad right yep this is for after you've uh going without the band is too easy you can change the resistance of the band he's got it out by his yep. knees i if can you... move it up further and then you have Variable resistance, not near so hard yeah, there. Yeah, not as hard. Yeah. 10 to and 15 repetitions. Both sides, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to say you can do a standing or weight-bearing uh, exercise version of this. I have the band, a loop band around my knees, just above my knees. Separate my knees. I'm going to bend my knees just a little bit, and I'm going to work. I'm going to bring my feet a little bit He's more. He's going to do the Charleston. Yep. There we go. There we go. Uh. But no, that, that is a nice way because in your weight bearing, that's how your body experiences and your hip experiences this uh, activity anyway. So it might relate to walking better. So, you know, progress to this yep. when ready. All right, Bob, what do you say? I think we got to go and do our giveaway now, Red. Well, yeah, but Bob, <laughs> I do want to say flat feet is something that you can work with. These exercises need to be worked with, you know, at least five days a week. Uh, take some effort, but you can do it, and you're going to find yourself. You can do it. Yeah, everyone will be doing the Charleston. Right. <laughs> All right, the giveaway.
All right, this week's giveaway is the fabulous Sleepovation mattress, Brad. There you go, Bob. Yeah, we've been promoting these for quite a while. We love them. We sleep on them, and uh, so do our wives. Right. So, 700 tiny mattresses. Air channels. Air channels. Nice and cool. That's and right. And it's very comfortable. It's the mattress for people who have pain. Right. Or if you just want to sleep well, too. That's right. Or both. Take care and have a good day. Be sleep cool. well.